wind up, and the pitch. He swings a line shot, base hit, right field, the Tigers win it. Here comes Kaline to score, and it's all over. Don Wirt singles, the Tigers mob Don. Kaline has scored, the fans are steaming on the field, and the Tigers have won their first minute since 1945. Let's listen to the bedlam here at Tiger Stadium. What a climax to a wonderful year, the year of the Tiger, 1968. This pennant, what a great gift to Detroit, with love from the Tigers. Go get him, Tiger. Wow. We're all behind our baseball team. season, but a new Tiger spirit was forged in the heat of that campaign. They lost a pennant and won a future. One man who saw that future was Bill Freehand. Here's what he said at Lakeland during spring training of 1968. Bill, can the Tigers do it this year? Well, Ernie, I'll tell you what, I'm convinced that we can do it. Uh, we've got some real good talent. I think we gained something last year by virtue of the fact that we had a lot of young guys who went through an experience we'd never been through before. And I'll tell you what, if we can keep our guys free from injuries, we're going to win in 68. The year of the Tiger began unhappily. Before 41,429 fans at Tiger Stadium, Earl Wilson hit a home run but lost to the Red Sox. Ah, that next day. That was the tip-off of a whole season of wonderful next day. In the ninth inning, up came Gates Brown with a pinch-hit home run to give rookie John Warden a 4-3 to three relief victory. Ray Gates had a special magic for the public. Uh, what do you think it was? Well, I think that he uh, transpired to them a quiet-spoken fellow. A humble-looking guy, but a powerful-looking fellow at the plate who produced. He represented the underdog. In the games that followed, there were two more Tiger victories for relief pitchers. One by Daryl Patterson, the other by Fred Lasher. And the Tigers kept on winning. Nine straight games they won, more than any other Tiger team had put together since 1949. They won a few the easy way, but only a few. They beat the White Sox in the 10th inning on Bill Freehand singles. They came from behind in the 9th on Jim Price's pinch single to tie the Indians, and won it in the 10th on Willie Horton's home run. They took three more victories at Chicago, first sinking the White Sox with three runs in the 10th inning then sweeping a doubleheader on April 21st. It was a date to remember. The second of those doubleheader victories was Denny McLean's first of the season. The year of the Tigers swept on in waves of triumph, in fantastic, thrill-packed, last-minute victories. Up to the time they clinched the pennant, the Tigers had won 37 games in the seventh inning or beyond, 29 in their last time at bat. Well, Ray, I guess that's just the mark of a champion, isn't it? It certainly is. It's almost like it's a magic formula, something that makes a champion. And when you look back to Boston in 1967, Baltimore in 66, those ball clubs had the same ingredients, the ability to come from behind. Everybody got into the act. Pitchers, hitters, fielders. A pinch double by Tom Matchy beat the Orioles on May the 7th. A home run and a magnificent base loaded catch by Jim Northam made him the hero of the next Tiger victory. After the game, I talked to Norton. Jimmy made a great catch in Baltimore, a big catch because the bases were loaded, and you hit the ground there and skidded. How do you keep that ball from bouncing out of the glove in a play like that? Well, I hit the ground with my shoulder, and I held the glove up off the ground. You 
Actually, you just dive and catch the ball, and if you get it in your glove, it usually stays in the web, the way the gloves are built now. Did you think you were going to get to that uh, drive off the bat of Robinson? No, when he first hit it, I didn't figure I had a chance to even come close to it, and uh, we just started running over there after it, and all of a sudden I uh, dove at the ball, and I was just lucky enough to catch it. And Kenny McLean kept right on winning ball games. Al Kaline drove in six runs as the Tigers fall up the Senators 12 to 1 on May 10th. Another date to remember. But that put the Tigers back into the league lead, and nobody ever caught them. McLean lost his first game of the year when the Orioles broke his five game winning streak on May 15th. But the Tigers then took three out of four from the Senators. Jim Northam won the first with a ninth inning Grand Slam homer. After the Tigers had lost the second, Gates Brown won the third with an eighth inning pitch single. And history was made as the Tigers won the fourth. One out. Matthews on at first. Three and two, the count to Kaline, batting in the place of Gates Brown. Tigers out in front, four nothing. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Jones working for Washington on the mound. Stretches. Delivers. There goes the runner. Fly ball to deep left. And that one, you can kiss goodbye. Hit 307 home runs in his career and becomes the Tigers' all time home run hitter, going one ahead of Hank Greenberg. He was tied with Greenberg at 306. He now has 307 for his major league career and becomes the Tigers' number one home run hitter. The next day, the Tigers beat the Twins on a 10th inning era, but first. Hernandez about as far right as you'll ever see a shortstop play. Even on an overshifted infield, which they're not doing here on Willie. It's a fly ball to right. It's deep, and it is out of here. A home run to tie the ball game. Willie Horton hits one to the opposite field in deep right center, and the game is tied. Bad news on the first trip to the West Coast. Earl Wilson on the shelf three weeks after bruising his heel. Al Kaline out 37 games when his right arm was broken at open by a little Krause pick. A tenth inning loss in the Oakland final ball fight after Jack Aker hit Jim Northam in the head with a pick. But there was good news, too. Denny McLean won his seventh game of the year. And on May 27, Eddie Matthews hit two home runs for a career total of 512, putting him sixth among all-time home run sluggers of Major League history. Pat Thompson, normally a relief pitcher, went nine innings as he threw a shutout at the Red Sox in his first start. One night when both Bill Freehan and Jim Price were hurt, Wayne Comer, an outfielder, came in to catch and did a good job. And the year of the Tiger rolled on with a thrill almost every night. On June 11th, the Tigers beat the Twins for their 13th last inning victory. And on June 12th, Here's McAuliffe now, and the crowd yelling, go, go, go. Here's the pitch by Jim Cott. Max Swing is a long fly to right. It may be gone. Going back, Ulanda, and he cannot reach it. It's in for a home run. McAuliffe puts the Tigers ahead. A home run in the lower deck in right field. The Tigers lead it 2-1. And Denny McLean raced on toward his date with destiny. Swing and a miss on a curve. One ball, two strikes. Clark leaning and waiting. Here it comes. A swing and a miss. The game's over. The Tigers sweep the series as they win the final one here under sunny skies and behind the great pitching of Denny McLean. In the ninth inning, Minnesota. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. The final score, Detroit 3, Minnesota 1. No late inning victory. One of the most thrilling came on June the 14th at Chicago. As Bob Cooney delivers the run, one time the left field going back and forth by the fence, that ball is gone. All right. Bob Wood reaches the feet there, low and deck of uh, left field, about 20 feet there. And they jumped on that first pitch. And that puts the Tigers down in front now, 6 to 5, here in the top of the 14th inning. Stanley was as great with his glove as with his bat. Swing and there's a drive.
drive to deep right center. Stanley going after it and dives and makes a great catch. A fabulous catch by Stanley. Aparicio going back to first base. He's doubled off. The play went Stanley to Dick McCullough to Bill Freehan on a sensational catch by Mickey Stanley. Mickey, uh, on that great catch in Chicago, how did you get such a good jump on the ball? Well, Ernie, uh, it was a time where I was in a slump uh, with a bat, and when I am in a, a slump with a bat, I'm just a little bit better feeler, and I was on my toes and ready to go, and uh, I, it was just one of the things where I got a real good jump, and I was lucky to catch the ball. I didn't think I was going to catch it. I skinned both elbows and both knees and tore my britches and uh, sweatshirt, and uh, Louis Aparicio was a runner, and uh, we doubled him off at first. He was almost to third base. Mickey, generally when you have a play like this, uh, do you anticipate and uh, move one way or the other depending on the batter? Well, uh, I do. Uh, this is a day when Joe Sparman was pitching, and uh, I followed the play of the ball, and I think this was a breaking ball inside, and McGraw uh, is more or less a pull hitter, and uh, I think I cheated a half a step uh, uh, by following the pitch. And you know, well, I don't know uh, what the pitch is going to be, but I follow the flight of the ball it, before the ball reaches a hitter, whether or not it's going to be a breaking ball or a fastball, or whether or not the ball is going to be inside or outside. Manager Mayo Smith later said that, in his personal opinion, that was the outstanding fielding play of the season. Time and again, Tiger Power smothered the opposition. Nick Trzuski beat the Indians for the home run and talked about it after the game. I think it's been said that your three-run homer against Cleveland was uh, perhaps one of the turning points of the first half of the Tigers' season. Did it come as a surprise to you? A very definite surprise, uh, in particular uh, uh, because I hit it off Sam McDowell, and uh, and I I got a, a real big kick. I helped our ball club. Nobody out. Northrop tonight struck out twice and got a grand slammer. That came in the fifth inning. His ninth home run of the year. Play ball down the line. And that one is gone. Weber, talk about coming out of slumps. He's done it again. Another grand slam home run by Northman. The Tigers have ran it for three to pull within one round of the Yankees. Yanks five, Detroit four. Talbot getting his sign from Fernandez and the right handed winds and pitches. Swing as a long belt in the center field. Robinson going back, way back. He can't get this one. It's passed into the fence. Here comes Stanley. He scores. Rounding third is Freehand. He scores. Willie Horton rounding third and he holds up as the throw comes into Fernandez. It's a long triple for Willie and the Tigers have the lead. Favorite of choice. Hayline returned to action in a new role, playing first base for the first time in his career on July 1st. And he had a big piece of the action. And he had a big piece of the action. And he had a big piece of the action. And he had a big piece of the action. And he had a big piece of the action. And he had a big piece of the action. And he had a big piece of the action. And he had a big piece of the action. Brunette now. Pumps. Delivers. Fastball. Line to left. Great hit. and I get a chance to uh, uh, find out what's really happening in the ball game. You know, I played so many years in the outfield, you just wonder what happens when everybody goes to the mound. Now I'm finally learning what they say and, and everything, and I think I'm going to really enjoy it. That set off a four-game sweep over the Angels and a five-game winning streak for the Tigers. The third victory was Denny McLean's 15th of the season, achieved with the help of home runs by Willie Horton, Norm Cash, and Dick Krzyzewski. Then came the real wild one on the 4th of July, when the Tigers belted out a 13-10 victory in a slugfest that saw them smash six home runs to tie a major league record. Listen to some of the fireworks, including part of the Tigers' nine-run second inning. Swing is a long belt to right, a home run by Cash, and it hits the roof of the upper deck. It hits the roof over the third deck, a two-run homer by Cash, and the Tigers have scored eight times in this inning. Go get him, 
Tiger. There's a long ball to the left, and that one's gone. The home run up there. Number 20 for Willie Horton. The Tigers now have scored nine times in the second inning. We're all behind our baseball team. Job pitch, serve up to Jim. Fly ball, hit the deep left field, going back by the fences, Roger, it's gone! Seven games over 500 were nine and a half games in front of the American League time. Well, you know, uh, Mayo Smith told me right after All-Star time that he thought the most important thing that happened in that first half of the season was that three-run homer by Dick Krzyzewski that stopped the Tigers skid in Cleveland. Another thing that uh, impressed me in the first part of the season was the fact that the experts had all said that the weakness of the Tigers would be the bullpen. And the Tigers came up with these young arms, uh, Darrell Patterson, John Warden, Pat Dobson in the bullpen, and then Johnny White came along to help out. Wyatt, who came on, and uh, a question mark as far as his ability, maybe with a couple of other clubs, but he seemed to do the job for the Tigers. And Ray Orland's great feeling, especially there in the early part of the year, plus the fact that uh, we were having a hero per day for about uh, two or three weeks. Now the city was warming up for these Tigers. This team of destiny was becoming the second most important factor in the life of Detroit. The most important was the peace and harmony of the summer, and it was a Tiger summer. The Tigers went into a little slump, losing three in a row, one at Minnesota, the next two at Anaheim. But things went better at Oakland. McLean again, naturally. His 18th was an eight-hit shutout over the Athletics. Two days later, Earl Wilson, back in form, made it two out of three in the series. Home to Detroit came the Tigers for a series of the Orioles. In the first game, Willie Horton made a diving attempt for a fly ball. Terry had it, then lost it after rolling over several times and seemed to be badly. Ernie talked about it later. Well, the first one I thought was my knee hit me in the stomach, but uh, it just, you know, it really was a great pain and knocked the wind out of me mostly, and uh, I kind of tore my stomach muscle. Did you think you had a shot at that catch? Well, I had it. I was looking at the film, and uh, I had the ball long enough for the umpire to call the man out. And uh, that's one thing I really love, you know, my center fielder, Mickey. He always look out for me. He always be the first one there with me. And, uh, and uh, he told me don't move. That's so far, and all the way through my career, it like every time something happened to me, he always be the first one to me. Been together so long, and I guess I'm more concerned of him also. You know, it's it just one of them things. He just always be the first one out there. Then it was Magic's turn to star. Two out, a man on first, that's three in. Tigers are trailing by one run, four to three behind Baltimore. Here's Magic now waiting on the full count delivery by Drabowski. Swung on, this a fly ball to right. It's deep, it might be. Back to Thomason, and it is a home run. A two-run homer by Magic. Here comes three-hand to score. Magic is rounding second, headed for third. All the Tigers are out of the home plate to meet him. Here he comes, and the Tigers win the ball. went in there and you realized it was a home run were you too excited to know that it won the game or did you realize that no uh i knew we won a game when uh when i knew the home run was gone ernie uh i just got some kind of great feeling all i could think of was that it put us really uh two more games ahead of baltimore 
At Baltimore a week later, it was Gerald Patterson's turn to star. They go to a full count with two gone. Everybody will be moving. Now the windup, the 3 2 pitch. Cold strike three. As Johnson took a fastball of the knees, Odom coming up with the right hand. And Daryl Patterson does a great job with the bases loaded, then setting down Valentine, Robinson, and Johnson on strikes. That's Patterson's best job done so far in a Tiger uniform for the Orioles from the six. No runs, two hits, no Detroit errors, three men left on base for the Orioles. We've played six innings. Tigers lead two to nothing. The next night, July 27th, was a milestone. Denny McLean won his 20th victory. Number 21 for Denny was his second straight shutout, a 4 nothing win over the Senators. Nick McAuliffe scored all four runs after getting four straight hits. Now to Minnesota for three games. The first won by the relief combination of Don McMahon, John Hiller, and Darrell Patterson. Then a loss to Dean Chance. But after that, you guessed it, Denny McLean again. His 22nd, his fifth in a row over the Twins. August 6th, ride night at Tiger Stadium, and what a ball game. It lasted 17 innings before Dick Trzewski settled it with a single for a 2-1 Tiger victory over the Indians. It was too late to finish the second game of the doubleheader, but the Tigers completed the 5-2 victory when the ninth inning was played the next night. And then in the regular game, Willie Horton's 27th home run and rookie Dave Campbell's first gave Earl Wilson a 6-1 victory. And Denny McLean, who else, finished off a four-game sweep with number 23. The Red Sox came to town in third place, closing in on Baltimore just three and a half games back. And the Sox won the first game on Joe Foy's Grand Slam. But then, in a series of dramatic events, highlighted by Gates Brown's hitting, the Tigers smashed their way to victory in the next three. Campbell, Comer, and Bright. Has batted in that ninth spot, has pinch hitters so far this afternoon, Al Brown. Comer did all right. He had a home run. Now the 2-0 pitch. Long fly to right field. Backing up at Harrelson. It's gone. Home run.
Rough Indians and Red Sox tickets. The Tribe, restless in fourth place. And Denny McLean opened a three-game series at Cleveland with his 24th victory. After a loss to Sonny Siebert, the Tigers made it two out of three as Mickey Lulich relieved Joe Sparma for a three-to-nothing shutout victory. Two down, a man on second, and the Tiger outfielder Al Kaline stepping in. Game is scoreless. It's the third inning. Big series for the Tigers, perhaps even bigger for the Red Sox. Here's the set on the mound by Lonberg. He delivers. Here's a long belt to that. It will be a home run for Kaline. And the Tigers lead 2-0. Now hits one in the screen. Number seven for Kaline. He hit an inside pitch, and he pulled it with power into the screen in left field. A two-run homer by Kaline, and the Tigers jump in front 2-0 in the third. Denny McLean went on to pitch his 25th victory and sixth shutout of the year. The next day's game was a thriller. Now the 1 0 pitch, long drive to left field, could be trouble for Boston. It's gone, home run. Bill Freehan is 19th home run of the year. Coming here in the top of the 11th inning, the Tigers take a 10 9 lead. Bill Freehand, we've got to talk to. Bill, when you hit that 11th inning home run to win the ball game up in Boston, you looked a little weary coming around the base. It's been a hard day, eh? It's been a hard day, and uh, the night before was pretty long, too. The humidity was real high that day, and I don't know, in the latter part of August, I'm, my energy is a little sapped on Saturday morning, but I tell you what, when that ball jumped off my bat, I, I couldn't have been any happier, and when we finally finished that game, uh, I was really a tired man. You knew it was gone then as soon as you hit it. Well, in Boston, you can tell pretty well. If you get the ball up, uh, I knew I hit the ball well, and I thought I hit it high enough to carry the wall, and, and uh, I was lucky. You like to hit in that park, Fenway? Uh, personally, I uh, always have done pretty well there. I don't know if I'd like to call signals there all my life. Uh, it gets a little tough, and I think a five-run lead is never real secure in that park. A couple of days later, a new Tiger pitching hero emerged. The one pitch away from a one-hit shutout against Chicago. Hitler has his sign. He goes to work. The pitch. It's a strike. It's all over. The Tigers win it. Chuck him out to win the ball game. Nothing across for the White Sox. And the final score in game number one, Tigers 7, Chicago nothing. And the day after that, the Tigers, whose last inning heroics rivaled the perils of Pauline all year long, came up with more of the same against the White Sox. Waiting on a 1-0 delivery. Right hand hitting outfield to Mickey Stanley. Swing, there's a fly ball deep to left, going back, Terry. Maybe it is out of here. A home run by Stanley. Right again. Terry has Tigers two, White Sox two. Bottom of the 10th at eight. The next pitch to Price is hit the deep left field. Might be, could be, it's gone! Jim Price clears the fence downstairs and left center field. His second home run of the year. The Tigers win the ball game 3 to 2. Jim, that home run you hit off uh, Wilbur Wood, uh, what type of pitch was it? It was a knuckleball, and he, uh, that's mostly what he throws. Did it hang a little high? Was it low? Or could you tell? It moved in on me, and uh, I'm mostly a pull hitter, and uh, I was fortunate enough the ball came in on me. Did you have an idea when you went up there that you were going to swing for the fence? Not really. I, I guess the knuckleball pitcher, I, I usually try to go back through the middle. Uh, Wally Moses said that's the best way to hit him, and that's what I try to do. What other thoughts do you have when you come off the bench as a fence batter? Well, this year I, I've had the good fortune to uh, come up with a couple timely base hits, and it's, it's an amazing thing. Before I go up to hit, I'm not really nervous, but after I hit, I'm shaking like a leaf. It's uh, funny. How about when you're out on the bases and that big mob's waiting for you at the plate? I'll tell you, when that happened that night, I couldn't believe it. I thought I was dreaming. I woke up in the middle of the night, and uh, I, had a, I had a dream. And I, it was just hard to comprehend. And I finally got the home plate, and uh, some of the guys were there, you know, and all the guys were running out of the field. It was, I said, you know, this is true. <laughs> you didn't get hurt in that mob, did you? I got spiked a couple times, but I'll get spiked any time for that. 
But that didn't end the fireworks in the White Sox series. There were plenty more in the final game. One nothing, Tigers lead. They got that run of the opening inning. Man who scored is up there now, waiting on a 3-2 pitch from John. Watch out. That one uh, just about hit him. I think Max a little perturbed. He's yelling out the Tommy John. Now he goes at him, and John tackles McCullough. Here comes Pete Ward in, Mickey Stanley. Salerno's there in the middle, and both dugouts empty, and the teams are going at it. Gates Brown is out there, and now the umpires are trying to separate the combatants here, and I think the situation has been still. John, I believe, has hurt his arm. The fight with Tommy John cost Dick McCullough a $250 fine and a five-day suspension. McCullough's loss was the first of a series of minor disasters for the Tigers. For with McCullough on the bench, they went to New York and dropped four straight games, their longest losing streak of the season. Everything went wrong in the sweltering August heat of Yankee Stadium. Earl Wilson was knocked cold by a line drive as the Yankees won the first game of a twinite doubleheader 2 to 1. Then the Tigers were forced to a 19 inning 3 3 standoff in the second game. It had to be called because of the curfew. The Yankees were on their way with a long winning streak, the hottest team in the league. But there was even more trouble to come, plenty of it. Denny McLean, who hadn't suffered two straight defeats all year, finally lost his second in a row on Saturday. And on Sunday, the Tigers dropped both ends of a doubleheader, each one by one run. They got out of New York wishing they had never seen the place, then considered themselves lucky to split a two-game series with the White Sox. That was the last day of Dick McCullough's suspension. He returned to the lineup when the Tigers got back into the friendly environment of Tiger Stadium. Dick, it must have been very frustrating sitting out that uh, suspension. Well, it was quite frustrating, Ernie, especially when you're in a pennant race, race like we were. Uh, uh, we were about seven games, seven and a half games ahead at the time, and uh, to be set down five uh, five games, well, actually six games, and uh, and uh, see my teammates uh, trying to battle out there these, these one ball, one run ball games, and it was quite depressing for me, and I felt. Uh, uh, greatly uh, part in uh, not winning a few of those games because of the fact that I was sitting on uh, on the bench and uh, I couldn't, I was really helpless and uh, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what would you do if uh, uh, they did it again, threw at me again, and I told them, I said, well, I'd really have to try and count to, count to 100 as fast as I could and then uh, think twice. Perhaps it was the welcome home. Perhaps it was the return of McCullough. Or perhaps it was Denny McLean's determination not to extend his losing streak beyond two. Whatever the reason, the Tigers finally began winning again. The first of two victories over the Angels was McLean's 26th, which had been 12 days coming. Their second was a Mickey Lulich two-hitter settled by a Willie Horton home run. The pennant drive was really underway. Manager Mayo Smith somehow had the pitching staff at its peak, and up to the pennant clinching game, there were 11 straight games without a relief appearance by the bullpen. The Tigers won 17 out of 22 after the New York derailment, and eight in a row to clinch. You can feel the confidence of this team, and pennant fever gripped the city. The department stores were selling everything from Tiger milk to Tiger t-shirts. The newspapers were running full-page pictures of the players every day. Every other car, it seemed, had a go get em Tigers bumper sticker. The magic number was posted all over town. People took transistor radios to the ballpark, theaters, movie houses, and restaurants. There was even a song written about... time Tiger Stadium attendance record was broken as they neared the two million mark. The players were seen, heard, and featured everywhere. This it was Wilson. baseball, this baseball, is baseball. The second the Bill Freehan here, the, the second most important Just name on my checks. The second place Orioles were in town for a crucial three-game series, and they were determined to take on the Tigers with a victory. This was a series that finished the Orioles as a serious threat. Oh, they were technically still in the race after that, but not really. 
For a while, nearly 125,000 fans went mad in the three days between August 30th and September 1st. The Tigers took two out of three to show the baseball world they weren't about to fold in the clutch. Earl Wilson was the pitching and batting hero of the first game at Fulham. Besides hurling a four-hitter for a 9-1 victory, well, let the story tell itself. First home run of Wilson's career, putting him within sight of Wes Farrell's all-time career record for pitching. The Orioles square the series in the second game, but the third was the one that set him reeling. The man who pitched it, McLean, of course. With Denny McLean, it almost became not whether he would win, but how he would win. He did it with his bat, three hits and a half. His team would come from behind, and with his inborn sense of drama, the maestro even did it with his club. And this even had the Baltimore announcer cheer. It may be a triple play. They did it. A triple play. McLean to Magic to Cash. The first triple play in the old ballpark since 1965. And later, Denny added to his immortality by having Mickey Mantle hit his 535th home run off of him. Denny and the whole team applauded the Mick, who thus surpassed Fox for the number three all-time position. In the second game of a doubleheader at Oakland, the day after that big Baltimore series in Detroit, freehand came up and... Now here's the pitch to Bill. Long drive to left field. It might be, could be, it is gone! Home run! Freehand clears that left field fence. Put the Tigers out in front by a score of four to three. The next day, it was Northrop's turn. Bogle ahead of the batter, Northrop, with a strike one count. The bases are loaded. He swings a bounding ball right field. Duzinski scores. McCauley bounding third. He's coming home. The corner of the plate, not in time. He scores. And on the third goes Stanley on the second goes Northrop, and the Tigers take the lead again, four to three, on a single by Jim Northrop. Back to Detroit to entertain the Twins. Man on third, man on second, and nobody pitches, and Willie swings a long fly ball to left. Maybe it's gone. A home run for Willie.
with his bat helping his arm. So McLean batting against Messer Smith, and he swings in at the fly ball to center. Johnstone is turned. He's going back. It's a deep one. He's still going, and it is off the wall. Diddy going for two. He's rounding second. He's heading for third. And here comes the throw. He slides. He has a three-bagger. Last game of the season in Anaheim was an easy one for the pennant-bound Tigers. He was tied with North. There's another drive deep to left. This might be gone. It is in the bullpen. A home run by Freehand. And the Tiger power asserting itself again here tonight. Seven to nothing. The Tigers lead up. Number 22 for Mr. Freehand. Here's Tom Satriano. Tom tonight, 0 for 2. and a full house at Tiger Stadium to lend encouragement. Denny McLean's big bid for immortality. Everyone was there. Julie Nixon and David Eisenhower, Sandy Koufax, and the last 30-game winner, Dizzy Dean. The Oakland A's lead the Tigers 4-3 in the ninth inning. Segui walking off the mound and rubbing up that ball tossed out by umpire Halleck. Attention is stick around here now before this big tiger cloud. Here's the set by Diego Segui. The pitch, Northup swings the bounding ball. It's flown to Decatur. He throws to the plate. The throw's wild. k line scores. Stanley rounding second. He throws. Goes to third. Take the first to Northup. And the game is tied 4-4. First and a man on third, one man down, 2-2 two, two the count on Willie Horton. Here's the set by Segui, the pitch. Swung on, the drive to left, that will be the ball game. It's over the head of Gaza. McLean wins his 30th, he's got Sammy in the score. Willie Horton, single as the ball game is over, and the Tigers win it 5-4. Denny McLean is one of the first out of the dugout, reaching out, and Horton is mobbed as the Tigers come from behind, and McLean has... His 30th victory of the 1968 season. Okay, Denny, our Tiger broadcast still on the air. Congratulations. Uh, your team has come through for you all year long, and they came through for you again on the ninth inning. They've been doing it all year, Ray, and uh, you don't expect them to keep doing it like this all year. I thought I was I thought I was in a little bit of trouble, but they pulled me out again. They've been doing it all year. Denny, about your performance today, you started off very strong, and then Jackson gave you a lot of trouble. Uh, did you... Uh, feel about the same way as you did your last couple of performances? Yes, I did. Uh, Jackson, the first home run he hit was a pretty good pitch. Right. But uh, the second pitch he hit was a high change. It was a real bad pitch. Real bad. Any, uh, you have a chance, of course, to talk to Dizzy Dean right after the ball game. What does I have to tell you? Dizzy just congratulated me and wished me a lot of luck. All right, now you've gone to 30. Uh, you want number 31 right now, of course. Uh, when do you think you'll go again? Probably Wednesday night, right? Denny, how's the arm feel right now? Arm feels wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much, Denny McLean. Congratulations again to you. Two days later came the climax. The climax had truly made 1968 the year of the Tiger. This big crowd here ready to break loose. Three 
Three men on, two men out. Game tied, one to one in the ninth inning. Nick Daniel checking his time with Jake Gibbs. The tall right-hander ready to go to work again. And the wind-up and the pitch. He swings a line shot. Base hit, right field. The Tigers win it. Here comes Clayline to score. And it's all over. Don Ward singles. The Tigers mob Don. Clayline has scored. The fans are steaming on the field. And the Tigers have won their first pennant since 1945. Let's listen to the bedlam here at Tiger Stadium. The Tigers are being mobbed as they go to their dugout. They'll hardly make it. Confetti in the air. Fireworks in the air. Now, Ray Lane is in the Tiger Clubhouse, and I imagine uh, quite a few things are popping down there. Ray? Right, John, we're in the Tiger Clubhouse, and as usual, uh, for the pennant winners, it's uh, the big night right now. Joe Sparmer, congratulations. Thanks, Ray. Job. Thank you very much. Great thrill to be a part of it, I'll tell you. Joe, you had to feel a little down the last couple of months. Yeah, I did. I, I think I won this game for the people who had faith in me, and I guess my wife, who won for her, I probably wouldn't have got through the year, I'll tell you. Manager Mayo Smith over here right now. A man that's been dunked by about five bottles of champagne. He is sopping wet. It ended up the way we uh, we wanted it to. We won it, even though we knew that that uh, Baltimore had lost. So uh, it's a very happy day. And of course, these guys uh, they played great all year. I'm happy first for them. Of course, uh, John Fester, the Tiger organization. Last but not least, the fans. They waited a long time for this. And see if we can't get over here to reach the Tiger president, Mr. John Fetzer. Right now, we get up here. And one else with a bottle of champagne. Mr. Fetzer, congratulations to Alice. <laughs> well, I'm uh, not very good at giving play-by-play -play descriptions, Ray, but that was the finest toss of water I've ever seen on Jim Campbell's ball head. <laughs> and this is the greatest testimony I know to the greatest ball club in the world today. Mr. Fetzer, I want to say one thing. You have tried for the past two years to build yourself a pennant contender. You got it tonight. This is the climax of a long, long, cold winter night. But I tell you right now, it's warm and deep. Can you get Mr. Campbell for us over there? Mickey Lola's trying to get Jim. Uh, Jim, congratulations. Hey, Ray. Good luck in the series. Thank you. 